uh, glad that you stayed on because uh, I think I have a couple of uh, interesting things to tell. And this is about AI healthcare and ethics, uh, uh, friends or foes. And it's an open, que open question. So it's up to you at the end to decide if they are friends or foes. So next uh, slide, please. Yeah, so this, yeah, you can take it a little bit more. This is my business card. So if you want to uh, contact me afterwards, uh, please do so. And um, can you click, uh, please? Yeah, and, and yes, and another thing. Yeah, so no, 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 go back, go back. Yeah, this is the problem we have, of course. Yeah, okay, you see that I also have some other uh, duties outside IBM. I'm part of uh, the COSIER Digital Health Committee, where we are discussing. Some of the things that Klaus just uh, conveyed to you. Yeah. Uh, uh, we get business analytics, business intelligence, and uh, artificial intelligence uh, classes. Okay, okay go to the next slide. So, what, what uh, this is what I want to discuss with you some history of technology, because if you're talking about ethics in healthcare, it, it, it cycles back to, um, to uh, technology and what people thought of uh, ethical use of technology. Of course, I will apply this to uh, healthcare and life sciences and show you how in different ways some governing principles have been defined uh, on ethics. And I will um, uh, show a lot of examples, uh, you know, um, throughout this presentation. So uh, I hope you can um, enjoy them. So. Yeah, if you really go back in, in the history, then there is a famous book about uh, robots. It's called I, a Robot. And um, this is a book that was written by a American-Russian uh, writer called Isaac Asimov. And he proposed right at the start of this book um, some laws. And the first law, uh, yeah, please click. So the first law is that a robot cannot injure a human being. If something is going to injure the human being in question. And the second law, yeah, is that it must obey the orders given by human beings, um, except when such orders are in conflict with, um, with the first law. So, for instance, if a robot is t told that uh, he should attack a human being, he would not do that. It's programmed like that. And the third law, yeah, uh, is that it, it should also protect its own existence. So if if it's uh, told uh, go and 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 uh, and uh, go, go and kill, well, you can kill really a robot, but another robot that uh, he, he wouldn't do that. But this was and this is a very cleverly written book because it goes into the boundaries, the limits of these laws, given the fact that robots are there. And in 1942, and maybe we go to the to the next slide. In 1942, you know, Asimov uh, was in the midst of uh, a transition to electricity and computing. Really, these are the industrial revolutions we have seen in the past. So his book, the, I, I think that I read the word computer twice, but he thought of a positron-driven uh, brain, a positronic brain, as he called it, because the positron, the counterpart of the electron, was just found. And he took that to, uh, to let it uh, look more scientific. So that's that's a, a fun thing, but you know he was one of the first that thought of these three laws and how you could uh, comply with that. And now these industrial revolutions have uh, have led to a disruption of our society in all kinds of things. A lot of technology has been invented, and that's from the steam machines and 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 trams, you know, uh, streetcars running on electricity rather than uh, horse carriages to computers, uh, to um, our laptops and, and mobile phones, to what nowadays is called intelligence, because we are now um, ended up in an era where intelligence is really what it's all about. We we have so much data, but how to draw wisdom and knowledge from, from that data, and that's where you need AI for, you know, and at the right top, you see even quantum computers, you see Bitcoin, you see the HoloLens of uh, Microsoft. All these technologies are are running, are coming at us at an enormous pace, and there will be more in the future. So, next slide, please. Yes. Okay. So, if you look back the last thirty years, that the interaction between humans and technology has has become increasingly intense, and 
I brought here along a, um, yeah, a picture of how the mobile phone has been developed. You know, it was very heavy, uh, more than a kilogram in the beginning. It became smaller and smaller. And then we added more uh, capabilities to it. You know, uh, the internet uh, where we only could text uh, each other in the beginning. And um, in the beginning, uh, people were a little bit reluctant to work with that. You know, and there are famous films on YouTube where people are interviewed in the street and asking them, do you need uh, something like this? And uh, they say, well, I don't, I don't think so because I, I don't want to be called uh, each time. And if, I, if my car breaks down, there's always a farmer in the neighborhood in the Netherlands, you know. And, but um, if we go out in the morning or, um, or are in the house without your phone, you are feeling naked, so to speak. So we have quickly adapted to this new technology and this is only one technology. And what it does is that it, it augments our senses, you know, uh, and capabilities. Uh, the same thing happened with the telescope and the microscope, you know, going beyond the boundaries or the limits of, our, of the human eye and see the very small and the very far. And the invention of the car was also something that uh, uh, went beyond what we are capable of in terms of movement, uh, because we cannot run at, uh, at 60 kilometers or, or 100 kilometers per hour. So um, it's always an augmentation of our capabilities. Go to the next slide. Yeah, and then there is a kind of classical um, um, philosophy around ethics and technology because uh, in the past, people saw technology uh, as something um, yeah, um, weird, you know, we must control it and it's, it's us uh, against technology. So it's, uh, it's really a fight. And it's just a means and not a goal. And, and don't forget the human dimension because we are there still humans and we will not be dominated by, uh, by, the, by the technology. And, but um, in the end, it, it leads up to also ethical frameworks and uh, ethical legislation uh, if we want to work with it, uh, you know, and, and you can um, ask yourself the question, yeah, but who is going to decide and judge us what technology, uh, what the technology uh, is up to and um, how does it align with our eth ethical uh, values, you know, so that that's also a question. Most of the time these are small committees, but it, uh, ethics, it depends really on countries, on, on people, and I will come back to that later. So there's not one kind of ethics and there are, it, it's a whole topic, you know, of research, of scientific research. And most of the time uh, it gets you into a class of value, a clash of values, because people are thinking differently of how technology should be applied or designed or being implemented. Okay, we go to the next. Now, in modern ethics in digital health and e-health, there's a difference between digital health, which is more at the doctor side or the professional side, and e-health, which is more at the patient side. Yeah, please click, uh, Bram. Yeah, it's, it's not so much focused on the question if a certain uh, technology is acceptable, but it evolves around something else, and that's how the interaction of technology with humans, and we adapt, uh, so it could be healthcare professionals, researchers, but also patients, of course, how this interaction, and please click, yeah, can be designed, can be implemented, and, and, and can be in line with our norms and values. And, and, uh, and, and yeah, and that, that's very important. Yeah, yeah, okay, you were a little bit too quickly, but it's really that, you know, when, I mean, it's a given that we have technology and that, and that we have ethical use of it. So uh, we are not um, going one-to-one -one in a fight with technology, but uh, we need to work with that. So we better think about that so design, implementation, and maintaining our, uh, our ethical values. Okay, go to the next one. So my company was uh, one of the first that uh, came with three laws of ethical use of AI in general, not only healthcare. And the first one is uh, that the purpose of AI is to augment human intelligence so that we have a uh, hybrid use of uh, technology. It's not replacing the doctor. It's not um, anything else, you know, but it's providing healthcare professionals in this case with tools that go beyond their human capabilities and augmenting their senses. And you know, whether it be speech or sight or even taste and smell, could be anything and reasoning, and we will see that see that later. Data and insights belong to their creators. Also, very important. IBM is not a Google that takes into account all the data that our people are 
uh, looking for, you know, when using uh, Google search or, or we, we say, no, no, no. Data and insights, it's the intellectual property of the people that uh, generated it. So it could be a, a hospital or even a patient. And we take care of the data. We, uh, we, uh, we allow uh, data privacy, of course. We need to uh, insert data privacy, but also allow these systems to be secure in our sense. So we help them um, in, in the cloud, for instance, to make them absolutely secure. And this new technology of AI, including AI, there's more, um, must be transparent and explainable. So that's very important. And we'll come back to that later, but you should be able to, no, wait a minute. <laughs> you should be able to um, explain what kind of data you use, how this uh, algorithm um, has, has been uh, constructed and how its usage is be, how well it performs against yep. the Golden Clean standards, and it should all be explainable even to a patient, if you will. Okay, go to the next one. Sorry, uh, Bram. Yeah, and also ethics. We realize that ethics is locally defined because if you go to somebody in the U.S. or in the in in one of the underdeveloped countries of uh, Africa, ethics is completely different, and this is one. We, we produce a product called uh, Watson for Oncology, and it, it recommends uh, treatments for breast cancer to not to the patient, well, indirectly to the patient. It's a tool for uh, the healthcare professional. And uh, we compare this to a tumor board, and uh, please click it. And then we saw there is a 93% uh, concordance with what the doctors would decide, you know? So you have a decision of the system, you have a decision of the doctors, and this is uh, an N of 638. And I can tell you, this is used in India and China and the people there, the doctors are very, very uh, happy with that because normally, yeah, their, their level of education is not that high as maybe in the US or here in Western Europe. And they can treat more patients because the, the sheer volume of patients is much higher. But in the paper that we published on this, and please click, yeah, we say very modestly, the study demonstrates that the AI clinical decision support system may be a helpful tool because we thought it's not ethical to say, okay, this is the tool, guys, because we, well, in, in that part of, of the world, it has been proved 93% is already very good, but others might be, say, well, no, the, our value, our norms is that it should be 99, up, up 99, and that's not the, the case here. So you see, it, it's, it's locally defined. Okay, go to the next one please. Now, um, what about ethical behavior? Because, you know, in AI, we were uh, fooled a little bit by, by Hollywood. And uh, you see here, iRobot, you know, the film maybe you saw with Bill Smith. Uh, and it has some aspects of the book of Asimov I told you about, but this is the, uh, the, the, the movie version. And um, yeah, so all, all, all these three laws play a role in this uh, film, by the way. But if you look at the Terminator or her, or Ex Machina, I don't know if you've seen them, 2001 of Space Odyssey, with this computer HAL 9000 that could even lip read. Um, yeah, what uh, you could wonder if if somebody has thought a script right here about the ethical uh, behavior of these systems. And I can tell you that they didn't have that uh, thought because they want to show the bad things, of course, and, and scare us because otherwise nobody would go uh, to see these movies. Uh, and this is just a commercial uh, enterprise. <laughs> So, okay, let's go to the next one. Yeah, so this digital transformation, I showed you this uh, revolutions and the third and the fourth stage, that amounted to a lot of data in our society, you know, and, and, you, and there are characteristics of data, volume, velocity, all these fees, but it ended up that you need intelligence, you know, you need AI to understand the data, even in healthcare, uh, but also in financial environments, in retail, uh, whatever, but it has disrupted, data has disrupted really industries, and you know about uh, Uber and uh, Airbnb, Th these guys are working with data, they don't own uh, hotels or taxis or whatever, um, they just are uh, in between, between uh, the consumer and, and, and the people that can provide the data, and that's what they really do, so this is an entirely new business model based on data, and um, yeah, there are applications now that make use of data. Okay, let's uh, go to the next one. Yeah, so in healthcare, also data is growing exponentially. If you look at the data, then, you know, um, 
a lot of data is being generated and it, uh, there's, there's a, um, a mix of structured and unstructured data. So structured would typically be a spreadsheet or something that you could attach a standard to like your BMI or maybe the number of days you spend in the hospital or the number of um, oxygen um, um, uh, equipment you have used or maybe mouth masks you've used, you know, those are very strict structured data. But most of the data in hospitals and in healthcare in general are unstructured data, like papers written by uh, in, free, in free language, you know, uh, by, by uh, professionals, by researchers, or it is a medical um, image or even an, uh, uh, an ECG. Yeah, so please click. And, you know, it, there's really a tsunami of data coming at us every 30, 30 seconds. Every 30 seconds, a new summary of a medical paper is being published on a famous website, but that, that line, that's only one source. So how can a doctor keep up with his, uh, with his uh, domain? You know, he has a lot of time doing other things, and, but he needs to read. And that's where AI comes in. Uh, that's just one use case. Please go to the next one. So the principles of healthcare professionals i showed you the laws that we have as ibm the laws of asimov but there's also a, a law for doctors called hippocrates oath so everybody who studies medicine needs to uh, do this uh, this oath and i will translate because this is dutch and it says i will practice medicine as good as i can do it but uh, and and at the service of my uh, fellow human but I acknowledge the limits of my possibilities. I acknowledge the limits of my possibilities, of my capabilities. That's another place. So please click. So this raises the question. Um, yeah, there's simply too much data, for instance, to start with, and AI can help. Yeah, please click, Bram. So this raises a nice question. Yes, go on. How ethical is it with respect to the patient and then click not knowing to misinformation. You know, you are a doctor, you think you are the king and you're not using AI based tools. How ethical is that? That you are saying, OK, I'm not going to use this because of some reason. But I challenge you, how how ethical would that be? And this is what I, I tell also to doctors I speak to and, and click, please click. And there's a research done by the Patient Federation in the Netherlands that said and that, that and that, that turned out that 81% uh, of patients say that they want to be helped by a doctor who is using AI. So people want this, you know, they have more trust in uh, the combination of a human being helped by AI, augmented technology, and, and, and doing so. Okay, let's go to the next one. So this is also, yeah, here's an example, also an ethical example for, from pharma. Yes, please click. Uh, there are two uh, kinds of drugs called prevastatine and uh, paroxetine, and that leads to higher blood sugar levels. And the one is, uh, it's a combination of a, a, a something that lowers your cholesterol. And the other thing is uh, against uh, an antidepressant. So if you are uh, yeah, not feeling too well because of work, whatever. But there are a million Americans that take these two drugs. And nobody knew that um, that, that uh, caused this effect. And why is that? Because these drugs are made by two different uh, um, pharmaceutical companies and they never called each other up and say, hey, I have this and I have that. Let's let's try to to test this in a human being. You need to wait for the phase four um, uh, in, in, a, in a clinical trial. But still then uh, the side effects were unforeseen. And this guy, this Professor Ross Altman, he uh, he applied big data to help track down this uh, malicious effect, you know. So this is where big data and AI comes in and, uh, and, and and tries to save the maybe unethical way, and maybe it cannot be done otherwise, of, of uh, pharmaceutical companies working with their drugs. Okay, let's go to the next one. Yeah, here can you, you can. Yeah, so AI, for me, AI, this is what it is. And it, it's, um, it's uh, something that composes of uh, many, many fields. So it's the creation of intelligent machines that work and respond like us humans. And from a data point, you can uh, apply a different um, definition. But you see that ethics, for me, is one of the uh, building blocks of the total uh, AI uh, stuff. There are also philosophical um, aspects, uh, psychological aspects, and there's more to it than only uh, mathematics and statistics or 
informatics. Okay, go to the next one. So this is, you know, I, uh, AI is hip hot and happening, but it, in fact, it's very, very old. And you see at the left side, you see Aristoteles, who, uh, sorry that I didn't uh, find a, uh, did not find a picture of him, but uh, this is a joke, by the way. Um, but he thought about how are we thinking in this great supercomputer we have up here, and that uh, resulted in uh, proposition logic. But and you see many, many famous people, even the fact that machine learning, maybe you didn't know that, but the term machine learning was invented with IBM because of this guy, Arthur Samuel, who learned uh, uh, computer playing uh, checkers, not chess, but checkers. And it ends up in, in things that we have done with a computer called Watson. It ends up with great things that Google has done with defeating AlphaGo, uh, with AlphaGo, the, the best Go player in, in, in the world. But uh, above that, you see autonomous cars now. So, uh, and, and that's in development. So if you go to the next slide, also, there a very important ethical um, uh, decision-making dilemma and moral dilemma is uh, popping up, you know. Maybe uh, her came up with this trolley problem. What do you do? And you know the story that goes with it. Uh, so you decide to uh, go straight ahead or you take a, tur a left turn or, you know, uh, uh, there's maybe somebody crossing the street. Do I need to go to the sidewalk? But there's a child there. You know, all these kinds of things are ethical dilemmas we still need to figure out yeah you can click twice i think uh yeah here's a self-dive car you know okay now not using ai uh, that is that an ethical thing you know the stethoscope when was it invented well i cannot hear you but please click it, it, it's a tool from 1816 mind you 1816 i don't know of any other sector where still tools are used that are 200 years old. well 200 it's more than 200 years old and if you click, uh, Bram, then you will see that there are uh, tools now, Medicine Stati and Eco Duo, which are FDA approved, that can do this job, you know, it, and um, it's based on artificial intelligence. And some of the doctors are using this and you can give the, the, the Eco Duo, you can give it to a patient and he can uh, put it on his chest and uh, it will record uh, the beats or, or uh, maybe uh, the sounds. And it learns from that, it's pattern recognition, you know, so, it's much precise, much faster, and uh, better, better quality than doing this by a stethoscope. Go to the next one. There's another example of not using AI, the ophthalmoscope. You see in in uh, comic strips, you see a doc here standardly, he has this on his head, you know. But this was invented, please click it, in 1851. Okay, in healthcare, still fax machines are used and uh, clipboards with uh, paper, uh, no uh, pads, but okay, so go, go to the next one. And there's, uh, there's a company called IDX that has an FDA approved uh, technology for uh, diabetic ret uh, retinopathy and can detect the biomarkers that you need from the fundus pictures that are being taken. You see the, the, uh, the things here. And I myself, I was a guest speaker at a conference some years ago uh, for eye care, and I asked the, the the people, how many of these pictures do you see, these fundus pictures, in your working life, in your entire life? Ah, uh, 50,000, or was a guy said, well, uh, uh, maybe uh, 70,000, and one, uh, one guy, he was, uh, yeah, he was uh, saying 100,000. I say, well, okay, whatever you see, this is trained on more than a million pictures, so it's significantly performs better than uh, you all here as a, as a human being, but it learned from you. So you don't, uh, uh, you shouldn't uh, forget that. And this is now being used in several hospitals. Okay, go to the next one. So here's the FDA approved, and maybe you cannot see this uh, very clearly, but uh, you know, these are the, the FDA approved uh, AI based applications. And uh, it's an ethical way of working and Klaus was already alluding to a conformity assessment, because you need an assessment that also takes into account ethics and how you deal with the data and so forth. But you see that there are a lot of things, and I, I think a clear winner is uh, pathology and cardiology. Those are the forerunners of this whole uh, business with AI. Okay, let's go. Next slide. Yeah, so there's legislation in making. Klaus alluded already to this, high risk and low risk, and maybe you can click again. But this also um, includes, yeah, click again, please, the ethical, yeah, next, next. Can you click, uh, Bram? Yeah. Can you click, please? Yeah, okay. So, no, 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 one back. Yeah. 
So there's also ethics guidelines for trustworthy AI. You know, this is also uh, uh, the digital future of Europe. And this is, these are uh, correlated, these two. Okay, go to the next slide. So if you develop an application, it should be ethics by design. An AI application needs a team. It needs a purpose. It needs data, of course. Uh, you develop an algorithm. It's being verified, it's being deployed. There's an evaluation and there's a peer reviewed paper probably. And if it's not good, then you go back, you redefine your purpose, you redefine your data. So it's a cyclic kind of thing, but it should be ethical by design. Go on, next. Yeah, so click on it. Yeah, so here you see a data science team and you see it includes a lot of different capabilities, a medical subject matter expert, but also the medical ethical expert in the middle, maybe of course the data scientist and the data engineer. And you see these are all different people coming from different uh, context and they have uh, yeah different meanings, different ethical views, and you should discuss this with uh, with each other. Click, please. I'm I'm sorry to interrupt, Nikki, but how much how much time do you need to finish? I up? have still two hours to go. No, no, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm yeah. I can I get yeah 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 for a couple minutes? of minutes. Yeah. How, how much do you say? Yeah, maybe five minutes. I do it in five. Uh, well, if it can be quick, it'll be nice because we have a panel discussion also involving okay. you, of course. Um, okay. So yeah, tell it's me a pity that it didn't work in the in the first place. Okay, yeah. So these are more. Well, you can read about it. Okay, go on, go on. Yeah. So th this is really what the team is facing. You know, um, all these uh, things uh, uh, about uh, ethics and and uh, yeah. We uh, one of the things I want to highlight, and then I will stop is bias. Bias. So go to the next slide. Yeah. So there is a lot of. So it starts with data, and an ethical use of data is 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 uh, is is uh, key. And one of the things is bias and, and fairness. Fairness is something totally different. Also, inclusiveness is something totally different. But please click. Yeah, due to bias, you know, it could be good bias or or bad bias, but um, the outcome should is then different because the input was not good. So if it's biased data, then and it doesn't live up to your ethical views on how this uh, outcome should be, then you should go back and see whether or not you can do something about the data. Please click. You can, yeah, again, I will, and again. Yeah, this is, this is a nice example uh, where we took uh, a sentence in English and translated to Turkish. He is a nurse, she is a doctor, and then we translated it back by the same machine. And uh, it says she is a nurse and he is a doctor <laughs> because, um, um, you know, it, it, there's a difference in, uh, well, apparently Turkish or in this tool, which we use, that there is a difference between he and she, because most of the time you're not expecting that a man is a nurse, which is crazy, of course. But it could also be good bias. And then I will uh, say goodbye. Uh, but uh, let, Let's go to good bias. Yeah, click, please. Yeah, it could also be good. No, no, no. Back, back. It could also be good medical bias, and uh, because um, uh, if you look at cardiology, for instance, it, uh, there's a big difference between men and women, and even in uh, certain uh, groups like uh, Hindustani, they are uh, suffering from uh, ailments you don't see too much in uh, other uh, other uh, people. So uh, it could be a medical bias that it's good. And yeah, last but not least, so the next slide, and now I will stop, is this book. Because you know all the data that has been produced in scientific papers is questionable. I repeat, all things that have been produced in scientific papers in medicine are questionable. And this is this book, Rigor Mortis. And uh, because everybody relies and copies and quotes other people without verifying if it's really true. Because sometimes people have fiddled with the data uh, to uh, to let shine maybe a drug or their own research. And this is very different to mathematics or uh, physics, where you can redo the experiment or still prove the, the, the theorem of Pythagoras. You know, there's uh, uh, there's no, nothing to it. Okay, let me stop here. There are many other things to say, and I don't have the time for that, but you can read for yourself. I have a lot of references here for you. So uh, if you will want to know more, uh, I put it all in and... Um, I'm sorry about the beginning because that's made me miss uh, 10 minutes, but technology is technology. So let's stop here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nikki, for your talk still. Yeah. Sorry to cut it off at the end. Yeah.
Um, I will gladly welcome you at our panel discussion, which uh, will start in a couple of minutes already. Yes. Uh, so we are going to transfer to that uh, yes. session. I will see you there. Okay. And I should get out of this one and uh, go to the yeah. panel. Yeah, exactly. Okay. All right. Are, Thank you. Were there questions, by the way, or was it completely clear? A uh, question from Klaus. Any guesstimates when it will be cleared or approved as a medical device? And then he's referring to IBM Watson. Ah, yeah, yeah. It, well, IBM, yeah, IBM Watson is a general name for a lot of products we have. And the, the Watson for Oncology had a, a CE mark, but that's not enough. Uh, we need to go back uh, to that for that in Europe at least, but uh, we see that most of the deployments are outside Europe. So um, and and they are not following the legislation that uh, is uh, in force here. So, but it, it needs to be revised. That you uh, you are absolutely right there. Yeah, because okay. it, it gives um, uh, uh, ther uh, therapeutic and uh, and diagnostical well not diagnostics, but uh, it says what what the best uh, uh, treatment option would be. A therapeutic um, uh, device. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. They are awaiting yeah. you. I'm going back. See you there. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye.